Good afternoon, everyone. We're gonna let people file in real quick and we'll start off in a few seconds here. While we're waiting, we'd really love to see where everybody is coming from, where our viewers are at. So please feel free in the chat to let us know your location, where you are. Few more people to come in. Three. Oh, we have New Jersey. That's where I'm from, New Jersey. Florida, Minnesota, Chattanooga, South Carolina, upstate New York, Texas. There we go, Texas. Felicia's in Texas, our other moderator. All right. All right, we have everyone in, let's get started. Oh, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's class. It's the Windsor and Newton watercolors class featuring the Cotman Sketcher set, and the title is Just Peachy. My name is Tim DePack, and I'm from Windsor and Newton, and I'll be your moderator today. I will be joined by Mandy Peltier, who will be your artist instructor for this class. Mandy will be taking you through today's class by providing information about the product being used and showing you some of her favorite watercolor painting techniques and creating this tasty piece of art using the Windsor Newton Cotman watercolor paint with Sketcher Box set. Before we begin, uh, for those of you who have not done it, we will give you the link in the chat box here to download the sketch for this class. You see that in the chat on the side there for you. And I'd like to let everybody know that the class is being recorded. So 24 hours from now, you'll be able to go back into the Michaels website, YouTube channel and rewatch this video. So I'd like you, you can choose along and paint with Mandy or sit back and relax and enjoy the class. And then you can watch a replay and record a video at a later date to complete the project. With that being said, I'd like to hand it over to Mandy Peltier. Thanks, Tim. Hi, everyone. Thank I am Mandy Peltier and I'm back with another class today. I'm really excited to be here with you all. Uh, so today we are going to be working on something that hits very close to home because I'm in Georgia and we are literally knee deep in peaches right now. <laughs> I have peaches on my island pretty much every day throughout the summer and my youngest son pretty much eats his body weight in them every day. So I managed to grab two from the island before he ate them and just to use them as a little prop today. So uh, we only have an hour together, but the good news is this class is... Uh, maybe uh, less overwhelming than some of my previous classes. So we should be able to comfortably do it within the hour we have. So I'll go ahead and share my other camera so we can get started. Okay, so if you've taken my classes before, you know I always start with an overhead view just to quickly go over everything so you can make sure you have what you need. I'll once again be using the Skechers Packet Box set, which is the set I've been using for all my watercolor classes this year. A glass of water, a graphite pencil and eraser if you haven't already transferred the outline to your working paper. Speaking of the working paper, I will be using a six by six sheet of cold press watercolor paper. Today I am going to use the ones that are new in professional paper. And then we're using two round brushes, a number zero and a number six. And then we kind of have a new item today that I haven't used in any of my classes before. And it's a Windsor and Newton Pro Marker watercolor marker. And I'll be telling you a little bit about this marker, but it's a marker and it's also watercolor. It's both. <laughs> so it's kind of fun. And we'll be using this for the lettering so that we don't have to paint on the lettering. And then I have two palettes here and I'm going to tell you why. On the supply list, there is a link to a 10 well artist palette with a center well that's on the Michaels website. I don't actually have that palette. And the 10 well palette I have does not have a flat center well. They're curved. And because this is a smaller project and the leaf uses such a small amount of paint, it's gonna be less waste for me to mix the leaf colors just on a flat palette. But if you have the one that's on the supply list that has a flat center well, just use the center well for the leaf. I'm just gonna use this for the leaf, just so that you know. And then if you want, there was also a cereal bowl on the supply list, and that's just so you can draw an arch for the lettering but you can also just freehand draw the arch. You don't have to use a cereal bowl. That's just for those of us who like a little extra help. 
All right, so I'm going to go ahead and set everything aside, except for what I need to draw the outline, because as you know, we always get started with that. So I'm going to keep my six by six sheet of paper, my graphite pencil and eraser, and I'll move this up. And I'm going to pull my outline over because I really like to work with the outline right next to me so I can better gauge and see what I need to draw. All right, so I'm going to start with the peach slice. And I have to tell you, I always manage to get this a little off center. So we'll see if I can get it centered today when I'm freehand drawing it. So I'm going to start with the peach slice and I'm going to start by drawing the bottom arch for the peach slice, sort of a half crescent shape. And so I'm going to sort of start over here and just draw an arch for the peach slice. Easy peasy. And then I'm going to create two right angles by drawing small lines on each upper end of that arch I drew. And then I'm going to connect by drawing another arch that has some squiggles to it. All right, just like that. I might actually want to make my arch just a little bit wider. So you can always make adjustments to get it how you want it. And we have time for that today and make some adjustments. And man, they're just going to let the people know that you always go a little bit darker on the sketch as you're drawing this, just so people can see it better at home. So I think as they're drawing it on, they're going to be doing a much lighter sketch. So yeah, just advise I, them. It's for visuals for them to see what you're doing here. That's exactly right. So I learned the hard way in my first few classes that when I used a 4H pencil, which is what I normally use since the lead is nice and hard and it's nice and light, you couldn't see it at home. <laughs> it did. I could see it on my computer screen, but it didn't show up on yours. So I use a darker graphite pencil. Now today I'm using an F, but like I said, I normally use a 4H to a 7H because then I don't even have to erase the graphite lines when I'm done. It's well hidden underneath the water for the beach. Okay, so now I'm going to draw the whole peach and it's a little bit tucked behind the left side of the peach slice. So I'm gonna start sort of upper right of the peach slice and I'm just going to draw a rough circle that then touches the peach slice. So I just do a really rough circle and now I'm going to shape it so that it looks more like the peach. I always like to draw if I'm sketching, kind of starting off with the basic shape that I see and then forming and shaping it from there, almost like you're working with clay when you're doing it with a pencil. So I'm going to draw a soft heart-shaped curve along the top here. Okay, and then I'm going to then shape this just a little bit to make it look a little bit more like the peach. I'm going to shape this and draw an arch it goes all the way up for that indentation on the peach that makes the peach look like a peach. Or I guess you could get away with calling these nectarines too. And then I'll go ahead and draw this other side here. Although just peachy doesn't really work with the, uh, <laughs> the verbiage if you're <laughs> doing a nectarine. All right, and then I'm going to draw the uh, stem for the peach. And now the leaf. So the leaf, one side of the leaf, the left side is a it's an arch, but it's the squiggly arch. And then the other side is just a smooth arch. So I'm going to start by drawing the leaf stem and then I'll go ahead and draw the squiggly side and then bring it down to a point and then draw the curved side. And then once again, I can make some adjustments to make it look a little bit more like my line drawing. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. And would you look at that? I've got it pretty much centered today. Go so Mandy, that does not always happen. <laughs> All right, so after we have the peach slice and the peach done, we can now do the lettering. So I'll hold the lettering up a little close so you can see it. This is farmhouse lettering uh, because this was kind of designed to look like maybe a market sign or something that you might see in a home that's decorated with farmhouse style. That's my house, I love the farmhouse style. Um, so every single letter has two parallel lines for the most part, it's the left side, like with the P, the E, A, the H, and the Y. Um, but the J is on the right side. The S is sort of diagonally through the middle. So that's just sort of the trick here is that every letter is going to have one aspect that has uh, two parallel lines. So I'm going to use my cereal bowl and I'm going to place it on my paper. And then I'm just going to draw an arch around it. I'm just using that as my guide, but you can freehand draw it. You don't have to use a cereal bowl. Uh, when I was practicing for this class, I just freehand drew the arch. Um, and if you count a space of a character, this entire lettering has 11 characters. So to center it, 
we're going to start with the sixth character, which is the P. And that's just going to be right in the middle of the arch. So I'm going to draw two parallel lines for the left side of the P. And then I'm going to draw a nice little curve and then a line at the bottom. So I'm just going to follow what I see on my outline and I'm going to use the arch as placement for my letters so that all the letters are uh, they curve as I go all the way around and write every single letter as I see it. Um, now, if I were doing this not while well, instructing and talking to you and I was really thinking this through, I probably wouldn't be drawing these letters as fast as I am today. So I always encourage you all to really use this hour uh, to learn. And then when you're able to on your own time to really take your time and to not listen to me talking your ear off, you can really take your time and make this look perfect. Um, but today you can at least learn the technique and um, get some practice in. All right. Andy, I would say for the text on there, people can actually use whatever they would really like, right? Their preference kind of. Well, sure. If they want a different type of text or drawing out straight with the marker or something like that, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. They can say whatever you want. There's so many uh, peach things as well. Peach keen, you know. Um, we went with just peachy, but there's there's <laughs> need to choose from. All right. So for the just, I could just start with the J over here, but to make sure it's all centered, I'm going to start with the T and work backward. So I'm going to put a little space here, and then I'm going to do the T, and then I'll do the S and the U, and then the J. So I'm just working backward for the uh, just lettering. And then the S. And then the U. So we're just plugging right along here. Hope everyone's having a great summer. I cannot believe it's mid-July already. <sighs> Not believe it. I think this is the fastest month yet of the year for me anyway. All right, so there is just peachy the lettering. So we are going to get started today by drawing on the lettering versus painting the, the peaches. So uh, I just want to tell you real quick about this watercolor marker. So if you're not done uh, transferring the outline, you can just keep working on that while I talk about the marker for a second. Um, so I mentioned that this is a marker, but it's also watercolor. So this has two ends. It has a normal or typical marker end where no matter what you write, I'll just write mom here, uh, it's all gonna be the same thickness based on how the tip is. So all your lines are gonna be the same thickness, no matter what angle you write from. And then there's also a brush lettering tip where it's real thin at the top and then thicker towards the bottom. So you can do some fancy, fancier lettering with it. Like if I were to do mom with this marker, it might look more like this. I'm totally doing this off the fly here. So hopefully this <laughs> works out for me. There we go. So you see, it's a little bit fancier. where you can get some thin lines and some thick lines. So if you use this as is, it's still transparent because watercolor is a transparent medium, um, but it's a little more opaque looking as far as being transparent goes if you use it straight from the marker. But if I were to draw a little swatch with the marker, I can use a brush to activate even further this watercolor and create like a gradient. So I would go over it and then keep moving and see how I've created like a gradient by using the marker. So uh, it is water soluble, uh, even though it's wet already. It's you can further uh, dilute it and make it look even more transparent. So, just wanted to point that out really quick. So today, for this lettering, because the lettering is all the same thickness, I'm not going to use the uh, brush or the lettering tip. I'm going to use just the standard marker tip side so that it can all be the same thickness. And literally what we're going to do is we're just going to carefully go over each letter, but because I'm using an F pencil and it's really dark, let me show you one more thing. If I were just to go directly over the graphite as it is right now with my marker, I'm going to show you what happens. You can totally see the graphite underneath and there's no way I'm going to be able to lift that with an eraser. So I'm going to do something preventative here, and I do this a lot when I'm working with other media, uh, particularly colored pencil, where I erase my graphite lines as they go, as I go. Um, with this, I'm not going to erase it 100%. So if I were normally erasing 
a graphite line, I would take my eraser and I would use heavy pressure to lift it. Well, I'm not gonna use my normal pressure. I'm gonna use about half of my normal pressure and I'm just going to go over it lightly so that I can lift most, but not all of the graphite on my lettering. So the goal is that you can still see what you wrote, but that it's light enough that uh, it won't show as much underneath the lettering. Um, so I'll show you what I mean in a second here. Uh, so you can still see it, it's just much more subtle now. So I'm still gonna be able to see where I placed my marker. It's just a little more soft, so it's not gonna show up as pronounced uh, underneath the watercolor marker. Another thing you could do if you happen to have a light box, you could place the outline on the light box and then your actual working paper on top of that and then just draw over the outline with your watercolor marker and then you won't even have graphite lines underneath your, your watercolor marker. Um, but today I just used the trick where I just lifted the graphite a little bit and then now I'm going to just write over uh, every single letter carefully with the marker tip, not the uh, lettering tip. And I'm just gonna take my time and just go over each letter. Right. And you, of course you can paint this on with uh, actual watercolor paint, um, but this is just a little bit quicker because you can just write with it versus painting with it. Um, I think drawing for a lot of us is a little more approachable than using a brush because we've been drawing or coloring since we were two years old. Um, so if you're more comfortable with just writing it on, use a marker. But if you have a lot of experience with painting, then you may prefer to Use a brush, either way is fine. This is your project. We just wanna give you a little inspiration. All right. I'm just working my way around, working on the H now. And you can take your time more than what I'm doing. I'm just kind of going over each one as carefully, but also as quickly as I can. There we go. So just peachy. Isn't that fun? I think these are fun little markers, especially the little gradient you can do with it. I think there's a lot of possibilities with these markers. And I was going to say, um, you can buy these open stock from michaels.com. They also come in little packs of six. So this one comes in the Skyscape Tones pack. It's this one right here. And so that way you can get a few other colors. It has a gray, maybe a cerulean blue, a pink color, and then like a yellow ochre color. All right, so there's your little introduction to those markers. And now we can get started on the peaches. So it really doesn't take too long to paint these peaches. I'll try to like slow it down and I think because we do have a little more time today with this not being as maybe complex of a project, I'll try to walk us through what I'm going to do and then we'll do it together. And the reason why I wanna do that is this project really is a wet into wet technique. You really want the water to move into another color or one pink color to move into another pink color while both are still wet. So I feel like if I do one part and then I explain and I explain and do another part, what I previously did will be dry and then the colors won't move into each other as they need to. So I'll try to, it'll be more reinforcement for you and you'll have a good idea of what we're doing before you even do it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply two layers to the peach, two layers to the peach slice and just one layer to the stem and the leaf. And we'll get started with the stem and the leaf today. Um, so I'm going to pull down that flat well, uh, cause again, my tin well palette, the center wells are, are rounded and they're not flat. So I'm just gonna use this for the leaf. And you've probably seen this sort of technique used in other Winsor Newton watercolor classes. I believe Shailene uses a flat palette generally when she's mixing her colors. So we're gonna do that today. We're gonna start with the leaf and I'm gonna use my number six brush to start. And I'm going to just stick my number six brush in the water, give it a stir to help those bristles absorb the water evenly. And then I'm going to wipe my bristles on the edge of the water container a few times. And then I'm going to put my brush into the cadmium yellow, which is the darker of the two yellows on the top row. Just going to run my brush into that color a handful of times and then stir it onto my flat well. And then I might need to add a little more water to it. So it's sort of a watery mixture. And let me explain what I'm going to do before I do it. I'm going to paint the yellow onto the entire middle of the leaf, but not to any of the edges, just straight up through the middle of the leaf. And then we're going to quickly mix another color on our well, the sap green. And we're going to apply that to the entire 
left edge other than to the bottom one quarter. All right, so that's how we're going to start. But let's just start with this yellow that we mixed. So let's take the yellow and we're going to put it through the middle of the leaf, but not to any of the edging, all the way from the bottom to the top. I'll hold it up so you can see. So you can see it's not on any of the edging, just right through the middle. And then I'm going to not even rinse my brush, I'm just going to stick it in the water for a second. And I'm going to put it into the sap green. And I'm going to mix that onto my um, flat well here. Get a, a same, the same watery mixture as the cadmium yellow. And then I'm going to apply that to most of the left edge other than to the bottom one quarter. And I'm going to allow it to just naturally bleed in to the yellow we first applied. So you see how they just naturally bleed into each other real pretty. And then without cleaning the brush, let's put our brush into the viridian green, which is the darker green. And let's just stir that into the sap green. And this will make like a pretty grass kind of green, but let's darken it. So I put some viridian green into the sap green. So now I have what looks like just a grass green. And I'm gonna darken it by adding dark umber to it. Dark umber is the dark brown in the set. So run your brush into the dark brown, stir that in. You might wanna darken it just a little bit more. And now we should have like a nice dark hunter green. And I'm going to apply that to the rest of the leaf that doesn't yet have color. So I'm gonna apply it to the bottom tip. Let that bleed into the yellow and the sap green. And I'm going to apply it to the right edge. And let's go ahead and apply it to the uh, leaf stem as well that connects to the main stem. All right, and then we're just gonna allow these colors to bleed into each other as they want. I might pop in just a little bit along the bottom tip. So the bottom tip is just a little bit darker than everything else. And then that's all we're doing to the leaf, that's it. It's just those three tones that are just gonna nicely bleed into each other organically. And we're gonna let them do their thing, all right? Everyone with me so far? <laughs> like you let the paper do the work. <laughs> yes, let the paper do the work. And that's not always the case. But with this, we're going to let the paper do the work. I like how you worded that time. That's good. All right, so I'm going to clean my brush real quick. I have my paper towels here. I'm going to blot my brush on it. Um, now we're going to work on the stem, the peach stem. So I'm going to pick up some of the burnt umber from my set. The burnt umber is what we use to darken the greens. And I'm going to put that onto the plate. I need a little bit more water here, so it's watery, a watery mixture. All right, and then I'm going to apply this to the entire peach stem, just real carefully here with our number six, just apply it to the entire peach stem. And you know in some of my other classes that we have darkened um, brown or we've made black by mixing this dark umber color and ultramarine blue. We're gonna do the same thing here today. So let's take the ultramarine blue, which is second from the right on the top row. It's the one that looks more like a, a true blue, if you will. And let's put some of that on your brush and let's darken up the brown until it looks like a really dark brown or even a black. So keep adding some ultramarine blue to that. And then what we're gonna do with this really dark brown color is we're gonna drop it on at the very top of the peach stem and at the very bottom of the peach stem. And once again, we're gonna let all those colors just organically bleed and merge into each other. So hopefully you should have still some of that brown through the middle of the stem, but it should be dark on the top and the bottom. And then that's it. So it's just those two colors. And we're just gonna let them bleed and merge into each other. I like the word merge better, but bleed is the, <laughs> the proper term. <laughs> All right, so uh, that's it for the flat palette. You can just see we didn't need that much paint. So I just didn't want us to mix a whole bunch of paint for something we didn't need much for. So I'm gonna set this aside now. And now I will use the normal palette that I use for my classes. And we're gonna start on the peach slice and then we'll move to the whole peach. And then we'll move back to the peach slice and then we'll do the last layer for the whole peach. So we're gonna bounce back and forth because we want the first layer of both peaches to dry before we apply the second layer. Um, so we're gonna mix colors as we go today. Sometimes I mix them all at once depending on the project and sometimes we mix them as we go. Today we're gonna mix them as we go. So. Um, we're going to mix four colors to start, and they're the four colors we're going to use for the first layer of the peach slice. So if you've taken my classes before, this will be a review, um, but I'm going to stick my number six brush in the water. I'm going to use it like a spoon, and I'm going to place two scoops of water into four different wells on my palette. So literally just use it like a spoon and do one scoop, two scoops, and do that to four wells. 
So one, two, one, two, one, two. All right. And so each of these wells is going to receive a different color. The very first one, we're going to uh, mix cadmium yellow into it. So I'm going to do what's called a pass. This is what I call them. So I'm going to take my wet brush. I'm going to run it into the cadmium yellow half pan a handful of times. And I'm going to stir it into those two scoops of water into the first well. And I'm going to just release what's left on the brush by wiping it on the edge of the palette. And that's one pass. And I like to have paint mixtures that are at least equal paint to water ratio, maybe even slightly more paint than water. And so I'm gonna repeat this pass thing three more times. So I'm gonna have about four passes into each well. So I'm gonna do pass two of the cadmium yellow, do a third pass. So you can see it doesn't have to take a long time. You're just like quickly stirring your wet brush into that half pan and then stirring it into the, the well with the two scoops of water. So this is the first color, cadmium yellow. The next one is just going to be yellow ochre. So we're not going to do as much color mixing today. It's going to be mostly, but not entirely, mostly just color straight from the palette. So I'll clean my brush by swishing it and blotting it. And now into the second well, I'm going to do four passes or so of yellow ochre. And yellow ochre is the yellowish color that's on the bottom row of your Sketches Pocket Box set. You can mix your own if you don't have yellow ochre. If you mix cadmium yellow with just a touch of purple, you'll achieve yellow ochre. All right, so we have cadmium yellow, yellow ochre. Into the third well, we're going to mix alizarin crimson, which is the only red that's in your Skechers Pocket Box set. It's on the top row, sandwiched in between your orange and your first blue. And we're going to do the same number of passes using the alizarin crimson four or so, it's okay if you need five or six, depending on what your pressure is as you run your brush into that half pan. I'm not dainty about it. I really kind of kind of go for it. <laughs> and as you get practice, you'll kind of develop a feel for um, if the paint consistency is right. And then I'm not gonna rinse my brush because we're gonna use red in the fourth one as well. So just as a reminder, we have cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, and from crimson. This last one, we're going to mix a dark red um, so there's a lot of ways you can mix a dark red with this set. You could use red and for umber. You could use red and burnt sienna. You even could, to a certain extent, use red and a little bit of blue. Uh, but I've talked about in some of my previous classes with the color wheel, how if you mix opposites on the color wheel, like yellow and violet or blue and orange, if you mix them equally, you get a neutral color. The science there is that when you mix the three primary colors together, depending on how you mix them, you'll get brown or you can get black. Um, and opposites on the color wheel are different combinations of the three primary colors. Just think about it. So orange is the secondary color that's mixed by using red and yellow, right? And then it's opposite is blue. So you are mixing red, yellow, and blue with your primary colors. The same is true for red and green. Red to primary, green is mixed with the secondary of yellow and blue. So you're still mixing the three primaries together, which is why you achieve a neutral color when you mix them together in equal parts. If you just add them in Part to each other, you'll just de-intensify what you add it to. So adding red just a little bit to green will de-intensify the green. Green just a little bit to red will de-intensify the red. So we're going to be using these two colors to create a darker red today. Um, so into the fourth wheel of your palette, let's do the same number of passes as red as what we just did. So it's going to look like you have two reds. So we'll do three passes of the alizarin crimson into the fourth wheel of your palette here. And then we're going to darken it by adding a single pass of the viridian green, which is the darker green on the bottom row far left. So I'm just going to do a pass of that into the red and you'll see how it de-intensifies the red and kind of makes it look more like a mulberry color. Um, it, it darkens that color nicely. All right, so we have cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, illusion crimson, and then we created a dark red by mixing illusion crimson and viridian hue. All right, and so now we're ready to clean slice. So I'm going to clean my brush. Blot it, set this aside for just a second here. Have this thing kind of off in no man's land. All right, so how we're going to start, I'll explain before we do it. Uh, we're going to apply uh, yellow ochre along the entire bottom edge of the peach slice, just using the natural width of the brush as our width of the stroke. So I'm just literally going to take my brush with the yellow ochre. And then we're going to use the cadmium yellow to the rest of the peach slice. So let's start there. All right, so I'm gonna put my brush into the yellow ochre. I'm going to run it along the entire bottom edge of the peach slice. 
and I'm just going to allow my stroke width to be what it naturally is using the number six brush. Okay, now I'm going to clean my brush, blot it on my paper towel, and I'm going to apply the cadmium yellow to everything else on the peach life that doesn't yet have color. And we're once again going to allow the yellow ochre and the cadmium yellow to organically merge into each other as we wish. Okay. All right, I'm going to fix this little right edge up here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create these pretty blooms, these blooms up here. So I'm going to take my red and I'm going to place five dots of red along that top curve of my peach slice. Uh, so we'll, let's start there. So I'm going to put just a little bit of red on my brush. I don't need a lot. And I'm going to hold my brush pretty much straight up and down. And I'm just going to go all the, see if I can do it angle you can see better. I'm just going to dot, 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 dot all the way across. And you can see how they're starting to bloom out and you're starting to get little spider veins. Don't overdo this. If you put too many dots <laughs> onto your peach slice, it's gonna bleed so much into the cadmium yellow that you will turn your peach slice red. So show restraint with this. And then after you do five across, I'm going to put five sort of above it. So one, two, three, four, five. You kind of did like a zigzag with them. Um, so it kind of looks like the peach slice goes up a little bit above where we did that squiggly line. You don't have to do that if you just want it to be on the peach itself. That's fine. All right, so that's what we're doing. And then we're going to repeat the same thing with the dark red, only we're only going to do three dots along the top curve um, and then three dots along the top. Uh, and that's because we want red to be the prominent color. We just want to add some darker values with the dark red. So I'm going to put some of that dark red on my brush. I'm just gonna do one, two, three across that top curve, and then one, two, three, just above it. And you can see how it's all bleeding into each other and uh, it's all creating those little spider webs and veins. Kind of fun, I love this technique. But again, we're not really fussing with it, right? We're kind of letting um, the, the paper absorb the paint and we're letting things uh, happen organically. So we're gonna put our number six brush aside for a second and I'm going to pull my zero. And with our zero, I'm just gonna do a nice thin line along the bottom of the peach slice using the red. All right, so I'm gonna switch my number six brush in the water to wetten it, wetten it, I think I just made up a word, to wet it. And I'm gonna put that brush into the red and I'm just gonna carefully go along the entire bottom edge of the peach slice. You can break it up into parts if you need. And if it bleeds into the yellow, I'll show you how to fix that. Mine did just a little bit, and that's okay. It happens. Real easy fix. If you've taken some of my previous classes, you've learned about the wipe and lift technique. Well, that's how I'm going to fix it. So I did the whole bottom edge using the red, and now I'm just going to go over just a little bit of it with the dark red maybe just the upper left and upper right edges, maybe just a touch along the bottom, just to darken it up just a little bit in part. Okay, so there's that. Do you see this part where it sort of bled into the yellow? How I can fix that is I can take my six, make sure it's nice and blotted on the paper towel so that it's still moist, but it's not wet. And I'm just going to run it right there where that bloom happened to lift it away just like that, okay? And then that's good. So we have done the first layer of the peach slice. And we're now ready to work on the first layer for the full peach. And um, we're going to mix a couple more colors for that. All right, so the first color, we're at, we need to add two scoops of water to our palette. So two scoops of water to two more wells on our palette. So with your number six brush, use it like a spoon again. And do one, two, and then one, two. So two scoops and so two more wells on your palette. The first new well, we're going to mix a amber color. So I'm going to use the burnt sienna color. We're gonna do three passes of burnt sienna into one well of our palette. Burnt sienna is sort of the reddish orange brown that's in your set. It's right next to the burnt ember that we've already used. So I'm gonna stir that in. And then I just, this is a really pretty color on its own, but I like it to be even a little brighter and sunnier looking. 
Um, so I'm going to add to it just one pass of cadmium yellow just to brighten it up just a little. It kind of makes it glow just a little bit more when you uh, add that uh, cadmium yellow to it. All right, so this first color we mixed was just with the burnt sienna with some cadmium yellow. And I'm going to quickly clean my brush, blot it. And the other well in our palette, we're just going to use the cadmium red pale hue, which is the orange in your set. So let's do three to four passes of the cadmium red pale hue, aka orange, to the other well on the palette. And we'll use these two new colors, but also the colors we've already mixed uh, to paint the first layer of the whole page. All right. So I'm going to set this aside again, and I'm going to first walk you through what we're going to do because we do want this to be a wet and wet technique and we don't want things to dry prematurely. So I'm going to start by using this amber color and I'm going to apply it along the entire left edge of the peach, just like we did with the yellow ochre on the peach slice, where the width of this color is just going to be the same as what is naturally achieved with the number six brush. So that's going to be with the amber color. And then we want the indentation uh, to not have color on it. So I'm going to use the cadmium yellow and I'm going to carefully go up alongside the left of the indentation. So I'm going to leave a little gap between the yellow line I paint on and the graphite line for the indentation. And then I'll fill in the rest of the left side of the peach. So let's start there. So we're going to start with the, the amber color, what I'm calling the amber color um, or brown topaz color. And we're going to paint on the left side of the peach slice just using a stroke that is naturally achieved with our number six round brush. All right, so there we go, not too hard. Quickly swish and blot. And then this is where I'm gonna carefully apply a line of cadmium yellow, but I wanna draw it up alongside the graphite line for the indentation, but leave a small gap there, like 1 16th to 1 32nd of an inch. I'll hold this up so you can see. So see how there is a little bit of a gap there between this yellow line I painted on and the graphite line for the indentation, leave a little gap. And then I'll fill in what's in between the amber line and the uh, cadmium yellow line with uh, paint, okay? So that's part one. <laughs> and then we're gonna keep with the cadmium yellow. And now I am going to draw another line all the way up along the indentation, but I still want there to be that gap where it's just the paper for now. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to draw a line just along the indentation, and there will be a, um, a thin gap here. I'll hold it up again so you can see. You can see there's a thin line with no paint. All right. And then I've done this in some of my other classes. So you paint on a more diluted version of yellow. Everyone, just stick your brush in the water for a second and then wipe it several times along the rim. And now I'm going to paint along the, uh, about an inch or so to the right of that one uh, cadmium yellow line I drew on to the actual indentation. So it's a diluted wash, okay? Everyone with me? <laughs> not too hard, right? Not so, not yet. And uh, this whole thing is pretty easy, it's fun. And I can paint this whole thing in like 10 minutes if I'm not slowing down and, and talking you through. So you all can have fun with this when we're done. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply alizarin crimson to the upper right and kind of down to the middle. And then I am going to apply cadmium, the red or the orange, sorry, the cadmium red pill to AKA orange to the whole right side of the peach and to what's left of the middle. And then I'm gonna use this amber color and I'm going to apply it just above the upper left of the peach slice. I'm gonna do that water dilution thing again and then apply that to whatever's remaining. All right, so that's sort of the snapshot there. So let's do that. I'm gonna start with the red. Oh, and I did forget to say one more thing. We're gonna drop in some dark red to the upper right, but we're gonna start with the alizarin crimson and apply this to the upper curve, kind of work it down to the middle, just like that. So upper curve, work it down to the middle, blot, your brush and clean it. I'm going to drop in some of that dark red. That's what I forgot to share. Some of that dark red, I'm just dotting it on to the upper right to have that dark highlight. Okay. Now this, I'm going to use the orange just like I said I would. I'm going to apply it to the, the right edge meeting up to that dark color. I'm going to apply it down a little bit past the red, but just a little bit with that color. Okay, that's the cadmium red. 
you know, the clean and the blot. And I'll use that amber color. We're going to apply it just above the peach slice. And what is to the right of it that doesn't yet have color? And then I'll place my brush in the water for a second. Wipe it, wipe it, wipe it, wipe it, wipe it. And then I'll apply the diluted version to what's left of the peach. And that is layer one of the peach slice. And the second layer is pretty much the same thing. You could stop right now. If you like how this looks and you're like, I'm good, I'm done. <laughs> you could stop right now. I just like it to um, be a bit more saturated and bright because uh, if you wait, uh, if, if you um, if you leave it as is, it's going to be a little more muted than if you were to do two layers. It'll be a lot more vibrant and bright. So just want to explain why I'm doing two layers. I just like vibrancy. <laughs> I don't do a lot of black and white art. I really like bright, bright, bright colors. So um, that is the first layer of the peach. And we just have one more color to mix that we're going to use on the second layer of the peach slice. And that is lemon yellow. It's the lighter yellow. Um, so I'm just going to add two more scoops of water to one more well of my palette. Speech simplified so you can see what I'm doing here. Always rearranging my workstation for these classes. All right, so two scoops of water into one more well of our palette. And I'm going to do three to four passes of the lemon yellow, which is the lighter uh, yellow in this set. All right, so I'm just going to do three or four passes. This is a really light color. It doesn't really influence that much, but um, I tried some graphs with and without, and I liked the final result better with the lemon yellow. So that's why we're going to use it today. All right, so what we're going to do, I'll once again explain what we're going to do before we do it. Uh, so we're back to the peach slice here. I'm going to take the lemon yellow. I'm going to apply it to the upper left, the upper right, and along the bottom edge where there's yellow. We don't need to go over the red edge, just the bottom of the yellow. And then we'll clean our brush, we'll wipe it several times, and we'll apply water to what's left of the peach slice. We don't need to worry about this upper part here, just what's within the outline that we drew. And then we'll drop on more blooms using the red and more blooms using the dark red, and then that'll be it, okay? And then we might do a little bit wipe and lift as well. So that in mind, I'm gonna clean my brush here, Let's put some lemon yellow on our brush. And I'm going to apply it to the upper left, the upper right, and to the bottom edge of the peach slice. All right, bottom edge of the peach slice. And then I'm going to swish my brush, wipe it several times, and I'm going to apply clean water to everything else. And this clean water is just going to allow the reds to give something to bloom into. Did you like that, the hand movements? I like to talk with my hands. All right, so put some red on my brush. Once again, gonna do five dots all along the upper edge. Do a few up top. Clean, dab, and I'm gonna repeat, but with the dark red, I'm just gonna do three. Whoops, that didn't really show up, so I'm gonna go over the three that I did. And then maybe just three up top. If you wanted, you could redo these when this is all dry if you want some that really stand out. I did that to this. I don't know if you can see, there's a few that really stand out and that's just because I repeated that process at the very, very end. And now I wanna create a couple highlights on this peach slice. So I clean my brush, I'm blotting it and I'm gonna use my wipe technique. So I'm gonna just wipe a little bit from the flesh, the yellow part of the peach, just to create some highlights. And then I'm gonna show you one other thing that I sometimes like to do. All right, so that just creates a little bit of a highlight there. With my zero, this is totally optional to create a few more of those spider veins while this is all still wet. I like to take my zero and just do some sort of wispy strokes with it just to pull out some straight lines onto the peach slice. And it sort of forces the blooms, if you will, and forces uh, some spider veining. You see that? So I just did that with my zero, totally optional. It's not really focusing. Let's see if I put my finger in there. There, there it's focusing. So I just took my zero and I just boop, 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 just real wispy to force some of those blooms. But again, that's a totally optional step. But that is the peach slice, pretty cool, huh? Not too hard, it creates a cool effect. And uh, so now we're ready to finish the actual peach. All right, so we're gonna do mostly the same process, uh, second layer for the whole peach. Um, we're gonna start though by uh, working once again on the left side of the peach. I'm going to apply the cadmium yellow to the entire left side and then I'm going to paint yellow ochre along the left edge. 
and the yellow ochre will sort of combine with the amber we've already applied and just create a nice color. And then we'll work on the right side, but let's start with the left side. So we're gonna start with the cadmium yellow and I'm going to just go ahead and apply it other than to the indentation that's just paper. We're gonna leave that still. We'll tackle that in a second. We'll just apply cadmium yellow to the entire left side of the peach slice that already has color. And then swish, blot, clean your brush, and then yellow ochre to the left side. Okay. And I want to do a wipe and lift technique. I'm just going to run it up on that cadmium yellow just to create a little bit of a highlight there. So if you didn't catch the wipe and lift the first time, all you do is you swish your brush, blot it several times on your paper towels so that it's damp but not soaking wet. And then you just are going to run your brush up where you want to lift a little bit of paint. Okay, so left side of the peach is done. <laughs> we'll tackle the indentation though. All right, so let's talk through what we're gonna do to this side of the peach. So we're gonna start by painting on some dark red to the upper right corner. And then we're going to paint on red to the middle. And then we're going to apply um, the cadmium orange here and just above the peach slice. And then I'm gonna do that water dilution thing and I'm going to apply it to the rest of the peach. However, I should say, after we do the uh, dark red, we'll go ahead and quickly clean our brush and we'll paint on the center indentation. I just wanna give time for this to settle in a little bit, but I, it's, it's sort of like timing is everything, right? If we have any issues where any colors bleed over into the left side of the peach, we'll use the wipe and lift to remove it. Um, so just bear with me here. We'll start with the dark red on the upper right. So I'm gonna put a little bit of that dark red paint on my brush. I'm gonna paint on just the upper right of the peach, just as you see in my finished example here. There's not that much. And then I'm going to go ahead and quickly clean my brush and blot it. And now is the right time to take some cadmium yellow and to go ahead and apply it to that white of the paper that we haven't yet applied any color to. And it will keep it um, a light value because it's only receiving one layer of paint, whereas everything else is receiving two layers of paint. And um, then we can go ahead and proceed with everything else I had mentioned. So we have the dark red in. Now let's take some of the uh, cadmium red and I need to mix just a little bit more here. Okay, so we're gonna apply this. We're gonna touch it up to the uh, dark red and apply it toward the middle. Okay, apply it toward the middle there. So there's a little bit here where I haven't added any color. I'm still leaving a gap, a little bit of a gap so it doesn't bleed way into the yellow where we just applied that line along the indentation. Clean brush. Lot, and this is where I'll take my cadmium red pale hue, aka orange, and I'll apply this to what's left of the right side of the peach. We'll have it meet into the dark red and the regular red that should still be wet along the upper left of the peach slice. Okay, just right there. And then we're going to do the water dilution thing. So I'm going to stick my brush in the water for a second and then I'll wipe it lots of times. You can even blot it once or twice. And then I'm going to then paint on what is left of my peach slice with this now diluted version. I'm even going to run it up right alongside the indentation because it, it hopefully will not bleed into that line you painted on now that we've given it a set, second to settle in. And sure enough, it didn't. So that's great news. And then if you want, you could always drop in a little bit more dark red along the upper right if you want to just darken that a little bit. I do have a little spot right here I noticed where it started to bleed over just a little bit. I don't know if you can see that. So I can just use the wipe and lift kind of technique or even do it where I clean the brush and I blot it several times and then I just real gently sort of transition it into the other side of the peach. See that? All right, so that's, and, and now I'll go ahead and do this. Do you see how like there's not any distinct colors on the peach slice? This is the point where I could go ahead and add some darker color right over top that will be distinct and won't bleed in. And I can do the same thing with the red. I can add some distinct dots to help those again be distinct and not spider in like all the others did because it's now dry. If you just want a bit more detail. So that, uh, that went swimmingly. This is the Peach Project. We have some time. I want to uh, show you what's coming ahead. Um, so on August 3rd, I'm going to be doing a loose project 
and it is these vegetables, this meet me at the farmer's market. You see a theme here. I am like a huge homesteader. I have an orchard on my property, grapevines, a garden, cut flower garden. I love being outside and working the soil. Um, so a lot of my projects are reflecting my own personal interests and hobbies. So we're gonna be doing some really loose uh, vegetables. This is not yet on um, the Michaels classes website. It should be uploaded by the end of today at the end of the week at the latest. If you go to my website, mandypeltier.com, there's a page on my website that is called Upcoming Classes. As soon as it's uploaded to the Michaels uh, uh, website, I link to it from my website. So if you want to know what's coming up ahead, you can always just go to my website and you can see all my upcoming classes and the link to register. And then I'm really excited about this one too, because we have blueberry bushes on our property. Um, August 10th, I'm going to be teaching you how to paint these blueberries. And this is a really fun technique. Uh, we'll be wetting the entire blueberry with water and then dropping in color. Um, I recently created and edited a Monstera leaf video for Michaels. If you go to the Michael Star YouTube channel and you type in Monstera leaf, uh, that video will pop up. That uses the same technique we're going to be using here. So if you want sort of a sneak peek, look for that Monstera leaf video on the Michael Star YouTube channel. Um, so I think that is about it here. Uh, please follow me. My handle is at Mandy Peltier Artist. I'm on Instagram. I'm also on Facebook at, with the same username, Mandy Peltier Artist. Uh, tag me, please tag me. You can tag me at Mandy Peltier Artist. Uh, tag Windsor and Newton. Tag, make it with Michaels so that we can see your beautiful work. You can even email me from my website if you're not on social media. Um, if you go to my website, there's a contact tab and, and you can email me there. I do my very best to respond to everyone who writes me and shares the art because it really makes my day. And I want you to know just how special you all are and uh, just how proud I am for uh, your amazing artwork. So thank you so much for being here today. I hope I see you in a couple weeks and uh, I really hope you learned a lot. Have a great rest real, of your day. Real quick, real quick before we okay. close on this, um, if anybody would you like to share your views with us of the finished project, if you were working alongside with Mandy, we'd love to see what your end results are on this, if you'd like to show it to us. This Just is why give her a second, hold it up so she could take a look at all the pages on there. Thanks, Tim, for having my back there. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. <laughs> yes, I love to see the work, and sometimes I just forget. Oh, these look amazing. I love it. Oh, I want to share one other thing to you before we end. Oh, I love these peaches. Great job. I'm so proud of all of you. I think this is like the most people have ever held up in my class. Beautiful so pictures. I'm happy Beautiful. that you were able to, to keep up with me and things. And I, a little treat too. So a little fun fact, this class was originally going to have three peaches. I don't know if you can see this. It was originally going to have three peaches and then we decided to just make it two. Um, but I have the written instructions done for this third back peach. So when this class is uploaded to the Michael Store YouTube channel within the next 24 to 48 hours, I always embed those videos on my website and I also link the written directions and the outline right beneath the video. I'll also include the bonus instructions and the outline if you want to do the one with the third peach. So I'll throw that in just so you know, you can look for that. Go to my website, mandypeltier.com. And just to follow up with you, Mandy, for all the people out there, the classes should be posted later on tonight for the upcoming ones, which was the farmer market and the blueberry. So you should be able to have access to that shortly. Sorry, we didn't have that here to share that along with you right now, but it should be in by the end of the night. And also just a reminder to everybody, uh, the video will have a replay 24 hours. You'll be able to watch on the Michael's YouTube channel. So you can, if you were not able to paint along with Mandy, you can watch the replay and complete the project at your own time. And also there will be an email coming to you with a survey. So we encourage everyone to take part of the survey. Uh, give us your rating. Let us know what you think about the class. Uh, also give us some comments in there and let us know what some upcoming topics you might like to see Mandy do for classes for you. Uh, I do personally read all the comments and I do go back and share them with Mandy as well. So we have some ideas of what we can work on in the future. So I encourage everyone to, to take advantage of that. And that's a direct contact back to us. So we know what you think about these classes here. All right. Thanks, Tim. And I think that's it. Any, I, I think we're good. I uh, hope everybody enjoyed the class today. And I think myself and Manny will enjoy seeing everybody, hopefully, on the upcoming classes that she's going to do in a couple of weeks from now. Yes. Awesome. I can't wait to see you all again. Have a great rest of your week. Have a great day, everyone.